Hello everybody, welcome back to another Strengths Materials video. And this one's gonna be super easy. We're talking about compound stress this year. Uh, and we have a quick problem to explain it. Uh, the problem goes as follows. We have a short post supporting a vertical load of 9,600 pounds and a horizontal force of 800 pounds. And it wants us to determine the normal stresses at corners A, B, C, and D. Now, when considering uh, stress analysis in our previous problems, uh, we typically solved for either the normal stress which is resulting from a point load obviously acting on an area, and we just distribute that over the entire area using P over A. We also have flexural stress, which we've talked about, where we're considering the influence of an applied or internal moment on the section based on the distance uh, away from the neutral axis to that furthest fiber that we're analyzing over the inertia value, so with respect to whatever axis we're analyzing. Uh, for these problems, we can have both. We can have a normal stress acting and we can have moments acting about both the y-axis and the x-axis which is what we're going to see in this problem and we're going to go through and uh, solve this step by step to see what we need to solve for uh, for each individual slot in this table that I have here. So the first thing that we need to do uh, is simply solve for these inertia values uh, so we can use them in the flexure formula. So the first one we can do is ixx and that is simply going to be the base with respect to x and then the height with respect to uh, x as well um, and that's following our same formula as we always use for these rectangle shapes 1 over 12 and we have the base which is 6 inches and then the height which would be 4 inches and solving that you are going to be left with 32 inches to the power of 4 and then similarly for i y y you have a very similar thing except now we are swapping those values and that will leave you with 72 inches to the power of 4. Now the next thing we need to do is talk about our sign convention. We're going to see that when we start analyzing uh, the stresses. Uh, and the first one we can analyze here is going to be this point load acting at the top. So we can imagine that this point load is going to transfer uh, straight down to the base of this member and then be distributed over the area. And for this example, we also have some eccentricity with this point load, meaning that we're going to have that normal stress created, but we're also going to have a moment created based on that eccentricity. So let's see what that looks like uh, with this visual right here. So you can see here that this point load is creating a negative uh, stress or a compressive stress at the base of this member, while the eccentricity is creating a moment about this xx axis, meaning that we have to fill in uh, the mx here based on the point load that's acting along with the PA. So we have two different things that we need to solve for, but the first thing we need to understand is the sign convention. So if this stress is acting over the entire area below, that means that A, B, C, and D are all gonna have a negative stress resulting from this happening. Uh, so we can fill in here on the table that we have negative values all throughout here. And for the MXX, we can see that based on the way it is drawn and where this point load was originally acting, we're going to have compressive forces acting on this side of the face with respect to the x-axis. And all that means is that BC, the points that we care about, are going to be negative based on that convention, that the compressive stress is going to be negative. So we have a negative sign right here for B and C. And then the tensile fiber, AD, points are going to be positive. And it's really as simple as that. And now we can start plugging in our values to solve uh, for what these values actually are. Um, so P over A, we know, is going to be 9,600 for that point load. And that is over the area, which is 4 times 6. And solving for that, you will be left with a negative 400. This is all in PSI. And we can just go ahead and fill that in for all of these separate points because that is going to be the influence across the entire area. Now for the moment xx, we can now solve for that value. So mxx is going to be based on the eccentricity from that axis of reference, the x-axis, and it's going to be acting about x, right? So we have an eccentricity from the x-axis of 1 inch, meaning that we have 9,600 pounds times the one inch force times distance leaving us once again with 
9,600 pounds per inch. And we can start plugging into the formula here. We have 9,600. We have the y value, which is what we remember from previous videos as c, which is simply the distance away from that reference axis to the furthest fiber that we're analyzing. So in any case, compression or tension, we're going to be looking at two inches there. And the ixx, which we already solved for, which is 32 inches to the power of 4. And solving for that, we're going to be left with a positive value of 600. And once again, we just go ahead and plug that in for all of these other values as well. And we already dealt with the sign convention. Now we have to consider the influence of this horizontal force, and we can see what it's doing based on the next picture. Here. And here, once again, we have a very similar thing where we're visualizing what is happening once this is transformed into a moment. We have a distance of two feet away from that force with respect to the area that we're analyzing. And we have this horizontal force as 800 pounds. So we know that this myy is going to be equal to that 800 pound force times the distance away, which is two feet. And converting that into inches, we have to do 12 inches per foot. And solving this, you're going to be left with a value of 19,200 pounds per inch. Now let's do the sign convention once again. We have point D and point C, which are on the compressive side of the face, meaning that we have a negative sign that we're going to put in here. And then similarly for A and B, we have tensile action here, meaning that it's going to be positive for A and B. Now we just plug in once again. As we've done previously, we have 19,200 and the distance away from the y-axis with respect to the furthest fiber, which is going to be three inches in this case. And we have the inertia value, which we saw for previously, which is 72 inches to the power of four. And solving for that, you're going to be left with 800 right there. And once again, plug it in the rest of the table. And we can finally solve for the uh, compound stress that's developed at each of these individual corners by simply taking the summation of each of these rows. So negative 400 plus 600 plus 800 will give you 1000. For this next row, you're going to have negative 200 at point B, you have negative 1800 at point C, and negative 1000 at point D. And that's the problem. It's just uh, visualizing what's going on with each of these external forces and how they're influencing the area of analysis uh, with respect to flexural uh, stress and normal stress.